Hello, my name is Will Dean. I'm the Forest Author. Today, I'm going to talk to you about procrastination. Great to see you. Welcome back. I'm here in my cabin. There is my bar. There is my desk and my axe. Um, it is warm outside all is well all is well in the forest i'm going to talk about procrastination and focus because i think it's something we could all improve on and 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 i know i could the main thing i want to say is that do not focus on all of the things that you tell yourself are important and that you tell yourself are writing focus on the writing so as a writer, as an author, as a part-time author, as a full-time author, as an unagented author, whatever you are, whatever, wherever you are in the process, it's easy to dedicate time to building your website, working on your social media profile, making YouTube videos. It's easier to tell yourself you can't write that first draft until you've bought a new fancy laptop. It's easy to tell yourself you can't do that launch into that next novel until you've been on that writing course it's easy to persuade yourself that you need to do another 12 months of research before you start writing the book my view is that everything that is not writing all of those other things whether it's working on your social media profile building a mailing list working on a blog it's all easier than writing a book everything <laughs> pretty much is easier than writing a book so it is easier for you to build a beautiful, slick website yourself, and dedicate hours and hours and hours of time to making the colors perfect and having a nice profile photo and having a mailing list incorporated into it. But don't focus on that. Focus on your reading and your writing. That's the number one thing. All of the other bells and whistles are completely meaningless if you're not writing great stories. So you need to spend some time, of course, doing those other things, like that's important. But when you have energy, when you have a chunk of free time, dedicate that to reading or to writing. Do not dedicate that to all of the other stuff because all of the other stuff is much easier than writing, but it's not as important. It's tempting to persuade yourself that you've done a lot of work over the weekend when in fact you've done a lot of like peripheral stuff. And like I say, I'm not being like black and white here. Of course the peripheral stuff is also important, but I would say do some of the peripheral stuff when you're tired, when you're exhausted, when you don't really have the capacity for creative writing, creative ideas, storytelling. But when you have some energy, when you have some, when you're feeling good, when you have a half day where your kid is on a play date or you're wife is at the gym or whatever you know you've got some time to yourself some quiet time you've gone off to the library don't waste it doing other stuff don't waste it writing a blog i would say as much as possible when you have time to write write focus on the writing the reading and the writing that's the most important thing it's easy to come up with excuses why you aren't ready to start something yet and I think uh, research is a big part of this. Some authors need to do a huge amount of research. Depends what kind of genre you're writing in, what kind of book you're writing in. I think all writers probably need to do some research. I think a lot of writers probably do too much research at the beginning, and then they find out that 75% of the research they've done is completely irrelevant to the story they're writing. So the way I treat research is that I need to do some research before I start writing, before I start even thinking about the book. I need to do some research into that world, into specific elements of that story that I'm not familiar with. So with Dark Pines, Two Vermilis on book one, I did do a lot of research into deafness, into deaf culture, into hearing aids, because I wasn't well informed enough. So I did do a huge amount of research. I follow deaf bloggers. I read a lot of articles written by deaf people. I did a huge amount of research into that. I also did research into small town journalism and I did research into elk hunting and the elk hunting culture and other stuff as well. But I tried to put a cap on that research. And this is the reason why. At a certain point, 
you need to start writing the story. When you start writing the story, then you find out through feeling your way through that new story what subjects you need to research specifically. And that's really, really, saves, that saves you a lot of time doing it that way. And then at the end of that first draft, you've done your research before you started, you've done some research throughout the story, throughout that first draft process. And after you've done it, you're gonna do a bunch of other drafts. You're gonna have plenty of time to do research then, but the story is out of you. And you know specifically what research you need to do. You're not gonna waste time doing research on something that proves to be completely irrelevant to your book. So that's how I approach research. I do a chunk of it before I start, but then I make sure I start and I write the story. Then I do some of it throughout, like the bare minimum to get me through that story. And then at the end, I do a lot of research and I tidy up, you know, anything like forensic details or police stuff, uh, legal procedure issues, whether it's a more of a cultural thing about what Swedes do in reality over midsummer in different regions, whatever it is, I'll do that research afterwards. And then I know exactly what I need to research. And this whole thing about needing a fancy desk or needing a fancy chair or needing a fancy computer, like everybody has different needs. And if you have specific reasons for needing a fancy chair, if you've got a bad back or whatever, then of course, you know, I'm not gonna say write the story before you've got a good chair. But in general, it's easy to think up a bunch of different reasons why you can put off writing your book. You know, I wrote Dark Pines on a compact that cost about 150 pounds that I bought in 2011. Doesn't really work, doesn't really connect to the internet. The battery life is about a minute, but I still write all of my novels on that laptop. You don't need to go out there and buy a fancy laptop with a lot of bells and whistles and distractions. You know, if you want to, go for it. You know, I'm not gonna tell you not to, but you don't need to. If you all you've got is a very, very cheap, simple laptop, write your book on it. If all you've got is a is your dining table from Ikea, write, you write your story on that. You don't need all of these other things. There's a lot of, like the human brain is wired in such a way that you can put off the difficult thing, which is writing the book, um, for days, months, years. You can tell yourself you need all this other stuff, but actually you need to get deep into that story and commit to it and write that first draft. I hope that's been useful. It's been a short, weird video but I hope it's been helpful in some way. Please do subscribe, like the video, and I will see you very soon in the next one. Thank you, bye-bye.